Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training. And in today's video, we'll talk about Sandy and fear of statues. All right guys, this video is gonna be very interesting. What we happened was um, Ling, one of my senior students, realized that when she was walking her dog, that there was a statue in the neighborhood that made her dog a bit nervous. It's funny with dogs and with statues. The statues to a dog looks a lot like a human. They look a lot like us, except for they stay in one spot. The primary sense of a dog is sense of smell. So once they smell that human, they realize that's a stone and it's not a big deal. Usually they will relax right away. The same is true for other dogs and things like that. If you see a dog statue with your dog, you might notice that your dog is showing body language or making signs, I wanna be friends with you, or I wanna be reactive to the statue. But as soon as they get close to it and they sniff it, they usually are like, oh, that's a stone, not a big deal. Another thing about statues is that they hold position and they're usually, their dimensions are off. They might be bigger than we are as humans. They might be really smaller than we are as humans. And dogs look at that and it's like, that's kind of strange. You know, the first you're frozen and then you're also a giant. Um, so those are things that could make dogs a little bit nervous. But the cool thing about this video is that we're gonna be talking about how to tell if a dog is nervous. What are good signs? What are good things to do when a dog is nervous? And of course, we're gonna be talking about mistakes, common mistakes that people make when their dog is nervous that might be causing them more problems later. So, here we go. Okay, all right, and now I'm gonna play. All right, so we started here. We have uh, Ling's beautiful voice. I wish she, I could understand what she's saying. I love that language so much. It's a cool language. So we see uh, Sandy. She's here. She's just sniffing the ground. Can't see much what's going on. I could see that she doesn't really want to follow Ling that much in the direction Ling is going. We also see that her tail is tucked and her ears are kind of up and back. She looks a little stressed to me. When we're figuring out how a dog is feeling about something, we have to also make sure that we look at the direction they're moving and the energy that they're displaying. I guess Ling was trying to move towards the statue or move by it, and Sandy was having none of it. There's a statue. Sandy looks like she's pretty close. In this video, she looks like she might be 9, 10, 12 feet away from the statue. There's noises in the background, and I know Sandy pretty well. I know that she's a little bit noise reactive. Um, she gets a little bit concerned about the sound sensitive. Ah, we hear a little chuffing. A little bit of noise barking, and, um, and Sandy's doing a good job of keeping Ling in between her and the threat, or what she deems as a threat. She's once again moving away, walking away from the statue and now she's sniffing the ground. So what I was saying about direction, if the dog is consistently trying to move away from an item, that's a good sign that the dog is a little bit nervous about the item or uncertain, or just wants more space between them and the thing. The other thing is the ground, sniffing the ground. That is a calming signal, and what it does is it lets everyone around the dog know that the dog is like, I'm sniffing the ground, I'm not a threat to anything, I'm just focused on what's going on here. So that way everybody else can calm down. It helps others calm down more than it helps the dog calm down as a visual cue. But the sniffing the ground is a way that the dog can distract themselves. Just like how when a dog is nervous, we might give them food to distract them away from being nervous and put them into a state of mind where they're consuming food. In this case, she's a little nervous, so she goes into a state of mind where she's seeking and she's sniffing, you know, um, instead of being focused on what she is nervous about. So dogs do that by themselves anyway, which is a pretty cool thing. They will like kind of change what they're thinking about. Anyway, um, going on here. So at this distance, as soon as um, Ling offered the treats, to Sandy, Sandy took them right away. Once again, there's a little bit of balking here. 
If you see this frame that I paused here and you look at her back here, you can see it's very curved, right? Um, and also the tail is tucked up. If she had a long tail, it'd be tucked up on, under her belly. So that's a sign of nerves. There's something stressing her out. Um, this is the statue here. This is the shade, shadow of the statue. Statues are weird to dogs. They are. They're unsure of those a lot of the time. Once again, she jumps. She's doing a lot of lowering towards the ground. Um, those are things that you want to see um, as she's dropping down. That's signs of like, I'm uncertain, lack of confidence. It looks like she's taking food. It looks like she's getting pretty close to the statue, but she's making sure to keep Ling between her and the statue. That's a nice long look. All right, so here we're seeing that Ling is offering food, but um, Sandy continues to move away, and now she's kind of ignoring the food a little bit. This could be a sign that she's just a little bit over threshold. Ground, stiff in the ground. Now she's taking the food, that's good. That was a jump and a flinch. So right there we saw a little jump and a flinch, and if you look, she looked right up at the statue when she did that. All right, here we go again. So as she's getting further away from um, the statue here, it looks like Sandy is a lot more relaxed. Her tail position is higher, her body's more fluid, it's raised up more. You know, um, when she comes back onto this, uh, br these bricks, her tail is lower. Okay guys, so as you know, Ling is one of my senior students and Sandy's one of my senior student doggies. I didn't give her tips on this, by the way. She just, this is what she did. What she did is she went there every day and she allowed the dog to sniff and then she left. She, she walked around the statue maybe a little bit at a pretty good distance, allowed the dog to pee on the grass and then she would leave. So the first video was recorded on October 20th and the last video was recorded on December 8th. In 49 days time, and of course they went on vacation, a couple other things happened, so she wasn't there every day, but all they did was walk to the statue, walk around that area, let her sniff, and then leave. When there's recording times, of course they tried to do a little bit more. So that is what they did, and you see the big change that they had in her behavior, and why is that? Now let's cut. Let's do this one over. So this is November 4th. So I guess the first video was the 20th of October. So this is November 4th, so something like, I don't know, a few days after that. I guess I could do the math and figure it out. There was a motorcycle. She did not care about the motorcycle. And that's pretty good for Sandy, because Sandy usually does not like things on wheels. Tail is nice and high here. Steps kind of springy. Body position, tail's a little lower, her ears look a lot more relaxed. Her body in general looks a lot more relaxed. There's a little bit of paw, raised paws, and she is definitely keeping herself behind, um, behind Ling still. She will not go in front of her towards the statue. Tail's tucked, paws a little high, sniffing on the ground. Lowered body, all these things are signs that there's some stress. Right, she, she's really lowering down a bunch here. She's sniffing the stone. This is a hard one because the statue is so high. And we'll talk about why she's a little nervous about this in a minute. Why I think she's a little nervous. She never told me. Oh, look at this. She got around on the inside of the statue, but she really is uncomfortable there. She wants to be on the outside. Jumpy, a little jump there. She's taking food pretty good. It looks like she's uh, taking food in a kind of panicked way. There's a lot of micro expressions of like lowering, a lot of flinching back. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that. 
this is a much quieter day. So now I'm, I'm willing to think that, um, that some of the stress she was feeling was definitely from the statue, but also, yeah, she will not turn her back. Yeah, she's like, I'm not going to do it. But also, I think the noise was some of it. Excellent. So she will not turn her back on that statue at all. We're seeing that is a sign of um, discomfort. She will face the statue if Ling is in front. Excellent. Going to the outside. I don't want to be that close. Tail is low and tucked. Once again, body position is low, back legs are low. She's not looking like she's taking food right now. Avoiding the food. Somebody made noise with a motorcycle or a car, and that, of course, got her a little bit more nervous. Yes, good girl. All right, when Ling marks yes, she will take the food. But if it's just being offered, she wasn't taking it. And I think some of that could have been the noise from the car. I think Ling is trying to get her to turn her back on the statue and be close to it. It looks like maybe five or six feet away, maybe four feet away. Ah, she did it. Excellent. She's still sidestepping instead of walking straight, but she is able to get closer to it and it looks like she's able to eat right now. Um, she's reasonably comfortable. Her tail is a little mm. low, but she's reasonably comfortable as long as Ling is um, on the inside and she's able to be on the outside. Excellent. Looks like they're moving away from the statue. Tail is high. Looks like they're walking down the street here. This is her normal state, I guess. If you look, you see her mouth is open. Her ears are not like, they're, they're just up. They're not backing out to the side any at all. Um, her tail is high. So this is like, to me, this looks like how she would normally look. Her baseline. So that way we could tell the difference between that and how she's looking at this when she's at the statue. Right? There's little nerve with the cars being so close to her, but it's not so bad. All right, now we're looking at December 8th, 2022. Let's see how she looks. She approaches the statue, her tail stays up. Her body language looks pretty good. Yeah, she's able to easily walk on the inside near um, the statue with Lee. She still wants to kind of get away and her ears are kind of in that I'm a little nervous position, but her tail stays up and she's able to a lot easier Lee, um, like walk and be comfortable around it. Whether she's on the inside or she's on the outside, she's able to focus a lot more there's less of the head whipping back and forth. We also notice that the ground sniffing has decreased. Although she's sniffing right now, um, we're seeing less of the sniffing on the ground um, as, she, as we proceed through these videos. Right, um, that just proves a little bit more that the sniffing of the ground is a way that she calms herself down and calms others down, who she think might need to be calmed down. Like that big scary statue might need to be calmed down a bit. 
There, now she will sniff the, that's a lot easier for her than it has been for her to get up to the statue and sniff the actual base of it. That's nice. All right, so that is what that is. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Um, we're gonna talk about common things that people do when they see that their dog is nervous or afraid or, or there's something in the envi environment that causes their dog um, anxiety, right? The first thing, the biggest mistake that a lot of people do, it's okay, and then petting the dog nicely on the chest, nicely on the head. It's okay. So um, the problem with that is that generally we don't do that when the dog doesn't feel stress. So what happens is when the dog is feeling stress, we say it's okay and we give them a pet. The it's okay doesn't really have a meaning to the dog because dogs don't really understand language. You know, they make associations. So the dog knows that they're feeling nervous and they hear it's okay. So they start to associate being nervous with the sound it's okay. Right? Um, so what can actually happen is that you can take a dog that only hears it's okay when they're nervous and you can bring them into an environment where they're not nervous at all and say it's okay to the dog. And in time, we could see that dog start to show signs of nerves. It, that, in other words, that makes them nervous because the only time they hear it is when they're already nervous, right? So the association is strong. Um, it's kind of like when you say yes and you give a dog a treat. After a while you say yes and the dog gets excited. Or I'm about to play with my dog and I say, you ready? And my dog gets excited. It's kind of the same thing, except for it's the opposite, it's the reverse, right? So the dog is like, I'm nervous, you say it's okay, now you're naming that. And then by petting the dog and patting them on the chest, what you're doing is you're rewarding them. So now they're learning through association it's okay means be nervous. Get patted on the chest means I'm doing the right thing, right? Um, getting the reward, getting that, that means I'm doing the right thing. So in time, really, you can train the dog to show signs of nerves by saying it's okay. So that's one thing that I see as a big mistake. Another big mistake that I see that people do when there's environment, when there's stress in the environment, when there's anxiety in the environment, another big thing I see people do is pull the dog on the leash towards the stressor. You know, force the dog to interact with the thing that causes them stress. That is a pretty big problem, especially if the thing is alive. If I know that the dog is nervous with strange people and then I pull the dog to a strange person so that they could interact, um, that could get that person hurt and could get the dog hurt. You know, so that is not a good thing. We want to work at their, um, at their speed. You know, so forcing the interaction is another big mistake that I see people make, you know, when dogs are nervous. Um, I think those are the two biggest ones. All right guys, so as you know, Ling is one of my senior students and I was able to find out what she did in order to be able to help her dog with this. So we're gonna talk about that and then we're gonna talk about what I would do that might be a little bit different in order to be able to help a dog with this same situation. First of all, what Ling did in the days that she had was pretty good. And all she did most of the days was walk to the area around the statue, allow her dog just to be there, you know, go to the bathroom and they would leave. And then she would do that multiple times. Not every day necessarily, but enough so that way the dog was consistently going back on a regular basis. And that alone changed, that alone, or mostly that. Of course, there were the days when, when she was recording, where she would get closer and she would use food and she would really cause more stress on the dog. There's probably a couple days of that, but for the most part, what she's doing is she's just going there, allowing the dog to see the environment and leaving. And that I think had the biggest effect. What I would have done a little bit differently is um, I would have went there every, or almost every day on a regular basis, kind of like what um, Ling was doing with Sandy. But what I would do after um, Sandy goes, you know, potty, what I would do is I'd walk in and out, back and forth, 
directly towards the statue in a way. But the thing is, I would never pass into a point. I would never get close enough to the statue to where Sandy shows signs of nerves, right? So I like serious nerves. I'll never get into a point where she shows real a lot of stress. In other words, I'll never take her over threshold. So I would stay back far enough um, and then I'd walk in closer. And then before we get over threshold, I'd turn and I'd go back to the starting point. And then I'll come back and I'll walk closer. And right when we're about to get over threshold, I'll turn away and I'll walk back. And I'll continue to do that back and forth and back and forth, maybe five times a day. And I'm not talking about walk. I'm talking about walking maybe 20 feet, you know, um, from, you know, 20 feet back to the line of threshold and then going back. I wouldn't cross that line necessarily as an everyday thing. And I think that we would see even more progress that way. Another thing I would do if it was if I was going to get my dog used to that is I'd go right to that line of threshold and I would play games. We see Ling doing a bit of that, but I think in my opinion she was a little bit too close to the statue when she was doing it. I'd play games at threshold or a little bit closer to um, being outside the threshold with her and I'll just fool around there until I notice that my line is getting closer and closer to the statue, which it naturally would. Um, I think that's another way that we would, um, we would be able to break down some of that stress that she's feeling. The third thing, a third thing that I could do in order to be able to make this ease out for her is go to the threshold, go to where she starts to show stress and then practice sitting on the leash there. You know, not even where she starts to throw, but if I'm a foot away from where she would start showing stress and then sit there, you know, bring a chair, bring a lawn chair, put it down and do sitting on the leash right there. That's going to change the way that she feels about it. Um, I could also go to that same spot and I could just feed her food. Not asking her to do anything, but just giving her food. That will change the way that she feels about it. Especially if I, say if I really went out there and I brought her breakfast and her dinner there, and it's like, you're gonna get fed breakfast and dinner close to the statue, but not where you're stressed. Um, that's gonna start to change things up pretty quick. So guys, I want you to check out and I want you to look and watch your dog to make sure that they're not getting too nervous. And when you do watch them, none of that it's okay stuff while they're nervous and don't force them. Don't force them to go say hi. Stay outside the threshold and give them some rewards. So we hired an um, AI scripter to um, write our uh, closing here. And I guess what I'm supposed to say is thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more tips on training your pet dog. And until next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Argos Dog Training. And in today's video, we'll talk about Sandy and fear of statues.